Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to another video by Right to 10 Wrenches and today I'm going to show how you can diagnose any problems with your alternator or your charging system uh, using a multimeter. Okay, before we go ahead with the testing procedure, I should probably mention that uh, there's going to be a lot of people watching this video thinking they have a problem with their alternator, but you know, a most common mistake people make when they try to diagnose a starting problem or their battery dying is they blame the alternator, in, but in fact it's your battery. So if you're in that category, I suggest you watch my video on how to test your uh, battery using a multimeter first, then if your battery is good, then you can go on to the next step, which uh, is testing your alternator. I'll put a link to that video in the description for this video, okay? Now onto the testing procedure. The first thing you want to check is to check your battery terminal and battery terminal connectors. You want to make sure there is no excessive corrosion on this. If you see any corrosion, make sure you remove these terminals, uh, clean the, the, both the connector and the battery terminal with uh, sanding paper, make sure they're all, they're thoroughly clean and then put them back on. Also make sure that these wires are not exposed, uh, they're not damaged, you know, make sure it's nice and tight when you put it back on and after that you should, we can go on to a testing procedure. Having bad battery terminals, this is the, you know, or dirty battery terminals, it's the number one cause of any charging issues you're going to have. In fact, this is how it usually plays out if you don't clean this or don't fix these, uh, any corrosion or, uh, or uh, uh, battery terminal, bad battery terminal connectors, you know, your battery terminal connectors go bad, there's excessive corrosion, that excessive corrosion keeps uh, the alternator from charging your battery pr properly, therefore weakening your battery. Over time, both the corrosion and the buildup on these terminals and the weaker battery puts an extra strain on your alternator and that extra strain could also damage your alternator. So it all starts here, it all starts at your battery terminal connectors, if they're corroded, it could possibly ruin your battery, weaken your battery, and a bad or weakened battery could ruin your alternator, and that's how the cycle usually works out, okay? So again, make sure these are thoroughly, you clean these thoroughly, and fix them, and replace them if they're broken. Okay, so what we want to do next is to check the voltage on our battery. We're looking for a voltage, a voltage reading of 12.4 to 12.8 volts. Again, it should be said that you need to be doing this test on a battery that's completely charged, and it's a good battery, okay? Okay, and we do that by getting our multimeter and putting the setting at 20 volts or uh, 20 DC volts, okay? And next, you put the black lead on the negative side and the red lead on the positive side. And as you can see, we got 12.4 volts, which is just in the spec, within the spec, so we're gonna go ahead with our test. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is to get inside our car and start the engine and measure our volt reading. What we're looking for is 13.5 to 15 volts, okay? Now, for different makes and models, it could be a little bit higher than that, a little bit lower, but generally speaking, 13.5 to 50 volts when the engine is running, it's a good reading. Okay, we got 14.4 volts, and that's a good reading, but in order to make sure that uh, everything is in good order, we need to rev up the engine to 1500 to 2000 RPMs and then check this reading. The idea behind that is uh, you, when you rev up the engine, the alternator spins faster, therefore produces more voltage usually. But you want to make sure your, uh, your voltage regulator, which is usually part of your alternator, kicks in and keeps the, the voltage output of the alternator below that 15 volts. Because if it goes over 15 volts, it could damage any electronics in your car, and that wouldn't be a good day. Okay, so after revving the engine to 1500 to 2000 RPMs, our voltage reading was still about 14.4, which is good news, and we can go on to the next test. Okay, so the next test we want to perform is to perform a load test, which is to get inside the car while the car is running, turn on our AC, put them to the fan at max, turn on our radio, turn on our headlights, emergency flashes while we're at it, Basically, just try to turn on all electrical components that are going to put a load on the system. And then we're going to test the system and the, the reading you're looking for is that you want the voltage reading to stay above 13 volts, okay? Okay, so after turning on all the accessories we could get our hands on, our voltage reading has dropped down to 13.9 volts roughly and that's still way, way within spec so we're good there too. Okay, before we go any further, let's quickly talk about voltage regulators. Depending on your car's make and model, it's gonna, your alternator that comes with it is either gonna have an internal voltage regulator 
or an external voltage regulator. Obviously an internal voltage regulator, which means it's gonna mean that your voltage regulator is gonna be inside the alternator, external. It means it's a different component outside of the alternator. Now the job of the voltage regulator is to keep the voltage output from the alternator within that 13.5 to 15 volts uh, spec. What generally happens when a voltage regulator goes bad is that you get a reading of way above 15. Let's say you get a 16 volts reading uh, when you're doing the, when you run the car, when you start the car and the car is idling. Or even when you rev it, it, it goes above 15, it goes to 16 volts. That usually means that your voltage regulator is not doing its job. And then you need to find out whether you have an external voltage regulator or an internal vol voltage regulator. And you know, if you have an internal voltage regulator, there's no, you can't replace the voltage regulator by itself, you need to replace your alternator. But if you have an external voltage regulator, you still need to, I would recommend looking into your repair manual on specific testing procedures so that you're sure it is indeed the voltage regulator and then you can just replace the voltage regulator, okay? But if you get a reading that's below 13.5 volts, generally speaking, it could be your alternator, but before we uh, replace that alternator, there's other things you need to check to make sure they're in good working condition before we uh, go ahead and uh, call the alternator bad. Okay, so if you're getting a voltage reading that's below specification, first thing you wanna do is uh, check the condition of your drive belt or your alternator belt, make sure it's nice and firm. The tensioner is not loose, it hasn't come, it hasn't broken or come loose. Also check the condition of the pulley, make sure it's nice and tight, uh, it hasn't come loose or it's also while the car, car is running that the pulley is spinning and therefore spinning the shaft inside the alternator, okay? Okay, what you want to do next is to visually inspect all the wires and connectors that come out of your alternator, especially this, uh, this uh, wire that comes out of your uh, positive post. And you want to peel back on this and visually inspect this nut and the stud that comes out of this alternator. If you see any signs of corrosion, you definitely want to take this uh, nut off and thoroughly clean that. We're also going to do a voltage drop test from this post to the positive side of our battery. See how much voltage we're losing when the current travels from there to there. And it should be within spec, but you know, a visual inspection never hurts. And you just want to follow this wire that comes out of here. And just, uh, if you have an external voltage regulator, by the way, it will be in the circuit. It will be after your uh, alternator and the circuit in this wire. And so, yeah, we're just going to follow this. As you can see, this goes around here, goes up, it goes to this post here. And then from there, it travels to the positive side of the battery, okay? And again, if you have a dirty battery uh, terminals, you want to definitely remove these terminals, clean them with uh, sandpaper or some uh, wire brushes, and that way you'll get a good reading or it might even uh, uh, fix your uh, low voltage problem, okay? Okay, now onto the voltage drop test. We're first going to test the circuit from the positive output of the alternator to the positive battery terminal. We do that by first starting the car and then turning on all, all our accessories, uh, you know, your radio, headlights, uh, AC, anything you can get your hand on. And then uh, we test, uh, we put one test lead on the positive side and then the other, we're gonna touch it on the positive outpost of the alternator. And then we're gonna measure the reading. The reading you're looking for, it should not be more than 0.2 volts, okay? Also, once you get a reading, you want to rev up the engine to 1500 to 2000 RPMs just to make sure and be on the safe side, okay? Okay, now we just touch this with this uh, test lead here. And as you can see, we got about 0 0.05 and that's well within spec. So what we're going to do next is actually rev the engine to 1500 to 2000 RPMs. Okay, so that didn't change much and it's well within spec, so we're good there. There's no mu there isn't a excessive resistance in the circuit from the positive post of the alternator to the positive terminal in your battery. Okay, next we're going to test the ground side. We do the same thing. We do the, this test lead on the negative side and then we're going to touch the alternator casing with this other test lead, okay? Okay, and on the ground side or the negative side, we got about a 0.7 and that's still below spec, so we're good there as well. But now just to make sure, we're going to rev the engine. Okay, so as you saw, everything was within spec, but let's say if you get more resistance spec on the positive side, for example. 
So basically, you'll just have to visually inspect these. Uh, you know, if there's corrosion here, that's could cause your spec to be way above normal. And then you just want to follow this wire, go around. As you can see, it comes around here, and then it goes to this other terminal that goes into your fuse box. And you want to inspect that. Also, any exposed wires, you want to tape those up and clean them, obviously, if they're dirty. And again, that again goes from there to the positive side of the battery terminal. And again, these are the most important things. You want to make sure these are thoroughly clean. Now, if you get excessive resistance on the ground side, well, you need to just follow your, your uh, alternator. Your alternator is grounded to the engine through this bracket here. So you want to make sure that bracket is clean. Make sure those uh, mounting bolts are tight. Those mounting bolts could come loose. Therefore, your alternator not be grounded to your engine. And if those are good, then you want to check your uh, engine to chassis uh, uh, ground connections. You know, go just go around the engine bay and you'll find them. There should be at least a couple that go from your engine to your chassis and ground that. And last but not least, uh, check the ground on your, uh, on your battery, the battery terminal connector, and also this ground here uh, that goes from your battery terminal to the, to the chassis as well. Okay? Okay, with that said and done, we're going to wrap up this video. Again, don't uh, mistake a bad battery for a bad alternator. If you're unsure, just uh, go hit the link uh, that I'll put in the description for this video on uh, how to test the battery properly, and that way you can rule that out, okay? So yeah, hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.